All right. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us on training Tuesday. Um, all right, let's jump in here. So today we're going to go over our updates and reminders. We're going to cover CPO notice 2024.10. We'll tell you where you can find some additional bid by trainings and other procurement training opportunities. And we'll also cover our spotlight Illinois for today. So on the updates and reminders, uh, next week, March the 5th, uh, we will have a special guest on Training Tuesday. So I will tell you who that is at the end of today's training. So small purchases overall are one of the six different procurement methods that the Illinois Procurement Code covers. A uh, small purchase by the code is identified as the small purchase threshold and notes that the competition using an IFB or RFP is not required for re procurements under this threshold. It also alerts that the agencies are not permitted to artificially split procurements to keep them under the small purchase threshold. The code does iterate that all small purchases with an annual value greater than 50,000 shall have the standard Illinois certifications included. Overall, per the code 30 ILCS 520-20, it does state that um, each CPO is responsible for enacting rules and processes for each or for small purchases. Small purchase designation and process for the CPO GS was just updated with the CPO notice 2024.10. That allows the agency state heads to accept responsibility for small purchases and be designated authority to conduct small purchase procurements up to $20,000 without SPO involvement. This notice separates small purchases basically into three groupings um, under 2000 between two and 20,000 and then above 20,000 up to the small purchase threshold. It does require state agencies to obtain an SPO approved state agency small purchase designation in order to take advantage of the agency having the ability to conduct small purchases without SPO involvement under that $20,000. Each agency will need to return the state agency small purchase designation form by March 5th, so next Tuesday, 2024. The agency is responsible for attaching the designation to each procurement file to show that's, you know, between or under 20,000, you'll have to attach it to each procurement file to show that the designation was in place at the time that the procurement occurred. Please note that the CPO's office audits these small purchases uh, that the agencies are completing to assure that the process requirements as outlined in the CPO notice are being followed. If an agency is found to not be following the process as outlined in CPO notice 2024.10, then the designation may be rescinded. If it is rescinded, then all procurements are subject to SPO review per condition eight of the CPO notice. So let's dive into the small purchase process as outlined by CPO notice 2024.10. With a designation, so we're going to cover these as if the agency does have that designation approved. So under 2000, these procurements are not set aside for small businesses. This means that agencies can go to large or small businesses immediately. The state agency may source a single SBSA or non-BSP uh, SBSP vendor. No SBSP waiver is required. No SPO involvement is required. The executed state agency small purchase designation memo serves as the written determination for awarding the contract and must be put into that procurement file. Between two and 20,000, again, this is if an agency has their designation. These procurements are set aside for small businesses. General small purchases are procurements when neither emergency nor sole source conditions exist. Uh, 
the state agency may source a single SBSP vendor. All SBSP vendors with the selected NIGP codes must be solicited unless the agency is able to source a single SBSP vendor. A non-SBSP vendor may be used only after all required SBSP vendors have been solicited and determined unacceptable. An SBSP waiver is required if awarding the procurement to a non-SBSP vendor. Uh, please note though that you need to go out to all small businesses first, determine that you can't award before you go out to any large businesses. Before you go out to those large businesses, you do need to have the waiver and the agency shall authorize the SBSP waiver if appropriate. No SPO involvement is required. The executed state agency small purchase designation memo serves as the written determination for awarding the contract and must be put into that procurement file. Above 20,000 up to 100,000 or the small purchase uh, limit or threshold. These procurements are set aside for small businesses. General small purchases are procurements when neither emergency nor sole source conditions exist. All SBSP vendors with the selected NIGP codes must be solicited. A non-SBSP vendor may be used only after all required SBSP vendors have been solicited and determined unacceptable or other um, justification warrants use of a non-SBSP vendor. SBSP waiver is required if awarding the procurements to a non-SBSP vendor. The SPO shall authorize the SBSP waiver if appropriate. So small purchases with emergency conditions. Statutory emergency conditions exist if there is a threat to public health or public safety when immediate expenditure is needed for repairs to state property in order to protect against further loss or damage to state property. To prevent or minimize serious disruption in critical state services that affect health, safety, or collection of state revenues, or to ensure the integrity of state records. So between two and 20,000, a small purchase with emergency conditions, the state agency determines if a small purchase meets emergency conditions. The state agency may source a single SB, SP or non SB, SP vendor. There is no SPO involvement required. However, the executed state agency small purchase designation form must be in the procurement file. Please also note for any small purchase with emergency conditions must uh, get to the uh, executed PO uh, with your um, appropriate approvals prior to the work beginning. Otherwise, it will require a late execution waiver. So that's just, that's not covered in the CPO notice, but that's extra tidbit for you today. Okay, so small purchase with emergency conditions above 20,000 up to the small purchase threshold. The state agency may source a single SBSP or non-SBSP vendor and SPO approval is required. Small purchases with sole source conditions. A sole source is whenever only one vendor can provide the goods or services required by the agency and a competitive procurement would not yield a competition. A sole economically feasible source is only one vendor can provide the goods or services to the state at a price that wouldn't be able to be matched with competition. So for those agencies that have their designation, these would be the steps that would be involved for a small purchase with sole source conditions. Between two and 20,000, the state agency determines if a small purchase meets the sole source conditions. The state agency may source a single SBSP or non-SBSP vendor, and there is no SPO involvement required. The executed state agency small purchase designation memo serves as the written determination for awarding the contract 
and must be included in that procurement file. For small purchases with sole source conditions above 20,000 up to that small purchase threshold, the state agency may source a single SB, SP or non-SBSP vendor and the SPO approval is required. Whether you are seeking a small purchase with sole source conditions due to a single source or economically feasible, you will be required to utilize the small purchase with sole source conditions form. The job aids will appropriately prompt you to include this in the file. Please make sure that you are truly going through and answering these questions in a detailed manner so that as your agency auditors or SPO are looking through this, they can truly understand why it is a single source or sole economically feasible condition. All right, so here is the summary view of the dollar value groupings. When it is set aside for small businesses and if a waiver would be required prior to getting quotes from large businesses, again, you can find this summary of all of the uh, dollar values and procurement conditions in CPO notice 2024.10. For procurements that require the small purchase set aside waiver, please assure to provide detailed information on the form. Specifically, if you are stating that the prices received from the small businesses were too high, please detail how you know this to be the case. For procurements that are designated, so those between 2 and 20,000, and where the state agency has an active uh, small State agency small purchase designation form, the APO would sign in the bottom left corner. For procurements that are not designated, which means above 20,000, or if you do not have an approved uh, state agency small purchase designation form, then your SPO would be the one to approve the waiver or deny the waiver uh, based on the justification presented, and your SPO would sign off in the uh, bottom right corner. On March 6th of 2024, so next Wednesday, new job aids will be available on our website. The below and above 10,000 will be removed. If you do not have an approved state agency small purchase designation form by March 5th, 2024, you will need to follow the bid by small purchases over $20,000 job aid for all procurements over $2,000. So on March 5th of 2024, uh, this does rescind CPO notice 2018.10, which was the CPO small purchase uh, process for uh, 10,000 and under. So we are updating that to be um, this $20,000 and that will go into effect on March 6th. March 5th though, so before we go into March 6th, March 5th is when your state agency small purchase designation forms are due to your SPO. Please get those in this week. The sooner we have them, the quicker we can mark those off our list as being completed. We want you to be able to utilize this new process as it becomes effective on March 6th. So on March 6th, 2024, bid by will reflect the new approval pass. So those that are being issued, um, you know, between 10 and 20, you're no longer going to have your SPO on that approval path in bid by. Um, as long as you have that approved designation form, please note though, that the bid by approval paths are not retroactive. So if something's already been submitted for SPO approval between that 10 and 20,000, and you do have your designation form, it's not going to remove the SPO from that approval path. Um, so that's just a note. So if you see it on there and you say, oh, I have my designation, it may take a little bit of time for that to catch up for those that were already in process. Um, all right, in March 6th, again, those new job aids are going to be published. So next week, in addition to CPO notice 2024.10, updating the small purchase process, it also provided a new small business set aside contracts based on NIGP code listing, which can be found on our website. These codes represent the procurements that must be set aside for small businesses, even when it's above the small purchase threshold. 
So next week, we're going to have Jennifer Allen, our small business specialist, join us to talk about the program. You can find additional training on our CPOGS Training Center. We will have our introduction to Illinois procurement on Wednesday, April 3rd. You do have to register um, in advance to attend this course. Our bid by monthly training will be held Wednesday, March 13th, 2024. And uh, we will have our bid by practice session Thursday, March 14th. All right, I'm going to welcome Nancy to join us real fast so that she can uh, present our spotlight for today. Good morning, everyone. Um, we are going to take a look at only this morning. Um, Roger, Robert Ridgway was an authority in the field of ornithology and wrote over 500 publications on birding. Butch Lockley is a current middle school principal, most famous for being a contestant on the show Survivor. Um, Elaine Shepard was a Broadway and film actress, but became a journalist and was the only woman journalist to travel with President Eisenhower in the Middle East. Musgrove Park includes an aquatic center, water slide, playground, skate park, and athletic field. Only Central College offers over 100 degree certificate and transfer options. And East Fork, Verner, and Bora Lakes host many fishing tournaments each year. The population of Only is 8,692. That does not include our interesting fact of the, a population of albino eastern gray squirrels, which are the rarest form of white squirrel. There is a concern that the albino population could no longer exist in Olney by 2034 if no efforts are made to preserve the colony. So I'd suggest you get to Olney sooner rather than later if you want to see these unique squirrels. I do have to say the squirrels are something else. It is weird to see an albino squirrel. Yeah, uh, and cool. my other fun fact is Butch Lockley, after he got back from Survivor, actually came to our school in order to present and tell us all about his experience and gave a motivational speech. So fun stuff from only. All right. So if uh, you have any questions, you can email those into cpogs.training at illinois.gov. I see a few questions in the chat. We'll take note of those and get those answered as we send out um, our presentation for today. Thank you all so much for joining and have a wonderful day.